There are so many things to consider when you're moving abroad. One of the things that you have to consider is your personality. Whether you're an extrovert, whether you're an introvert, or ambivert, which is you're kind of navigating both worlds of introvert and extrovert. And you really have to take your personality into consideration when you're moving abroad because there will be personalities out there that you will have to contend with. No matter where you go, you're going to find people who have brought their personalities their behaviors, their attitudes from wherever they came from to their new forever home, which is also your new forever home. Hi, my name is Regina Dillard. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new, thank you for stopping by. So I want to talk about some of the things that aren't really discussed when you're moving abroad and how it can impact your experience. So for me, I'm going to speak from personal experience. I am an introvert. Yes, I have a business. I have a food service business. I've had it for the past 30 years. I, you know, have to be on when I need to be on. And that's the extrovert part of me. Knowing that I have to network with people. I have to sell the product. I have to be on in certain spaces. But the introvert part of me knows how to retreat and turn it off. Now, it's not that I don't like being around people. I love socializing with people. I love a good party. I love listening to music. I love hanging with certain crowds. But my energy can only take so much. And I know my emotional threshold. I can tire out very quickly. I go to bed early. And even if I don't, sometimes I just shut it down for the evening, you know, without notice and without needing permission and just go kind of to my corner and I can recharge on my own and by myself. Well, when you are an expat or you've moved abroad, you have to know your limitations. You know, so when I first got to Mexico, you know, you often think that it's going to be this utopian village that's going to be receiving you. And sometimes it can give you a sense of that because everything is so new. But once you've been there for a while, that tends to fade. Once you've been to all the hot spots and you've explored the city and you've seen the lights and the sights and, you know, it's just an adventure when you're starting out. It's like a shiny new penny. You're, ooh, ah, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I could live here. And you've only been in town maybe a few weeks. Well, to me, that's kind of like a tourist outlook. But once you've actually rented apartment or bought a home or you've been there for any length of time, then you really start getting to know the city and not just getting to know the city and your your um. Uh, neighborhood and maybe even the people, you kind of get to know where you fit, where your personality fits, because you're not always going to click with everyone. You're going to encounter some personalities that will mesh with yours. There are going to be some personalities that definitely will clash with yours. Just like at home in the U.S., you have people who want to come and run things and take over and control um, and are feisty and, you know, just different attitudes. You have to know how to navigate that and how you're going to not only respond or not respond in those situations, but kind of know where you fit in. For me, I have a small group, a core group that I go out with. We meet up maybe once every other week. We have become very fond of each other. You know, we have our group. We're not a clique. We just know how important community is. I guess at the foundation of everything, especially of humanity, you know, being in community is important. You're not meant to live alone and on an island. And for so many years, you know, I had been that person. I had been very content to be by myself to kind of be in my home with my books, my TV or my music, my 
glass of wine or non-alcoholic drink, my food, and I just enjoy my space. But when you're going to a new country, you know, you tend to bring those types of attitudes. It's not really an attitude. It's just your personality trait. You know, you bring it with you. You know, wherever you go, there you are, as they, as they say. And, <coughs> excuse me, when I went to Mexico, there I was. Um, I had walked the city. I had seen the sights. I had gotten to know some of the expats there. I had gone to brunch my first weekend there and met so many of them. You know, I was like, um, like a, you know, small fish in this big pond. I didn't know anyone and it's my personality. It's not always easy for me to, um, you know, warm up and get to know people. I'm not a cold nature person. What I am saying is that it takes for me a while to get to know people. I'm an observer. So I may sit across the room for you and just observe you for a little while and just kind of see how you interact with other people, how you respond to people, you know, kind of get a feel for your energy and then I'll approach or I'm open to you approaching. It's kind of like having to warm up to people. Some people like one of my girlfriends, she walks into a room and she commands the room and she never meets a stranger and just, hey, hi, you know, she's very bubbly. She's outgoing, very opposite of me. And I am not like that. And I tend to attract, I tend to attract extroverted people. I have no idea why, but I attract extroverted people. And she's one of those. But when you're an introvert like me, you have to find ways to um, create community. So if you are an introvert like me, one of the things that I recommend is finding where the events are, finding out where the expats that you have gotten to know where they go. And then explore, explore places that you've never been. Maybe you want to connect with one or two people from within the expat community to say, hey, let's get together maybe once a month, or let's go to the art museum, you know, once a month, or let's go out to eat once every two weeks, or hey, let's go to the grocery store and um, do some shopping together. So my philosophy is that you don't have to have a whole lot of people around you to have a good experience, right? You just have to have those faithful one or two, you know, and especially as you get older, you already know that your friend group is dwindling anyway. Number one, because you don't have the bandwidth or the patience to deal with a whole bunch of nonsense. You know, you want to be around like minded people who are chill, who enjoy your company, you enjoy their company, but people that you don't necessarily have to see every day. But when you do see each other, it's just like you picked up the last time you were together and you're going off and doing something. I don't recommend staying behind closed doors and isolating self because that can create a sense of loneliness, a sense of detachment, um, and being in that state for too long, you're going to question why you're there. You're going to question, well, I haven't made any friends. I don't know anyone, you know, and you're in a strange country. You may not speak the language. So that's even more isolating because it's not like you can go down the street and talk to one of the locals if you don't know how to speak Spanish. So what it'll create this sense of isolation and the next thing you know, you're going to want to go home. You want to go home back to the States <laughs> because you're by yourself. And of course, no man is an island. No man should be living alone or a woman. I think that's a song. No man is an island. Um, yeah, you don't want to box yourself in. And then as far as people who have personalities that are different from yours, that's just life. I was in... <laughs> I wasn't going to even bring this up, but I'm just going to say it because it's an example and it's a true situation. And I was in a group with other ladies who are traveling and I posted something that I wanted feedback on. I'm one of those people that I have worldviews on different subject matters. So 
it's not necessarily about black people. It could be about anything, but it's just to invoke conversation, to get feedback. I posted something and apparently it annoyed this one woman. And before I knew it, she was, um, it was the center of vitriol. She was upset. She lashed out and ended up calling the people who kind of commented on my post and including myself, some, um, moronic mammies yes she said i'm gonna unfriend all you moronic mammies and you, because you don't have any sense of preservation and it's she said that with such anger and hostility i don't think i've ever been called moronic or a mammy i think that's such a low vibration low energy just derogatory term to use for someone that is supposed to be part of a sisterhood. And it, it, it upset me. It didn't upset me because I took it personally. It upset me because I thought I was in a safe space to have conversations. Um, I didn't realize it would trigger someone because anyone that knows me knows that's not my intention. And I was just taken aback, you know? And so when I saw it, I'm thinking, wow, you have an issue with what I said, but you had take personal issue with another black woman in a space that's supposed to be safe. You didn't approach me with sensitivity or kindness. Um, and your approach was off. I said, be well and have a good day or something like that. And what's interesting is when I went to her profile, I always check people plus people's profiles when they start talking crazy, just to see what they're about, just to kind of see what their 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 mindset is and how they live their lives. And, and when I went to her profile, she had a scripture in First Timothy, I believe, and it talked about like one of the fruit of the spirit, which is called self-control. It says something about self-control in the text, but it was part of her profile. And I said, wow, that's interesting. Very interesting. So I'm not judging, you know, um, that's the dichotomy of human life. You know, we act one way and we say some, we say one thing and act another way and you just have to give people grace. So I just dismissed it, but I was taken aback because, you know, you're going to find people who are not going to agree with you. You're going to find people who bring their personal attitudes and opinions that's not going to jive with yours. Now, name calling, that, that's, that's really going left. But how do you deal with someone when your personality is so different from them, when you are in a, in a space that's supposed to be safe, when you're in a country where, you know, you are with other supposedly like-minded people? How do you deal with that? Well, in many cases, you don't. I know I won't. What I do is just kind of give them their space. And what I do, I just find someone maybe I can, you know, maybe talk it out with, say, hey, have you ever had this experience? Not deal with that person anymore. That person is just on the outside of things as far as I'm concerned. I will have no um, interactions with this person. And just focus on the people who are like me. Because... When you are in a space and you're with people who have personalities that are different from yours or who may respond differently than you do and you're in a new country, you start thinking like, oh my God, you know, I didn't think I would experience that here. Well, I have news. You're going to experience it everywhere you go. You may even experience that from the locals that you meet up in your new, your new forever home. And you just have to ground yourself and determine that why you're there. You go back to your why, why I'm here. I'm not here because I have to appease or appeal to anyone um, that I have to bow down or you know, I have to be beholden to any one person or any particular group. Or I have to change my personality based on, you know, the behaviors of other people. You don't have to do any of that. Just ground into your why of why you're there. Know that people who are like-hearted and like-minded like you are waiting for you. People who you're looking for are looking for you. 
And that was one instance, but as I explore like other groups and um, people who are traveling, you know, I, I pay attention to a lot of things. And it helps me determine what spaces I want to be in. Now, I'm not saying it's all bad, because it's not. If it were all bad, then that could be a deciding factor on where I want to be. Not saying that I wouldn't be an expat and go back home, but hey, maybe this particular city isn't for me, or this particular community, or this particular neighborhood, or this particular group isn't for me. Maybe I need to kind of rethink how I want to move around and who I want to move around with. So you just kind of have to change some things, but it really takes some discerning too. Discerning of energies, not just automatically gravitating and latching on to people, but just give them time to so that you can feel them out you know just feel them out not you know you know you don't just call people friend when you meet them and i know some people do oh this is my friend this is my friend i remember i used to do that but i learned that you can't call everyone friend and i know sometimes we use that term loosely but it really shouldn't be used loosely. A friend is a friend is a friend. And that usually comes with um, getting to know someone, um, feeling that you can be vulnerable with that person, sharing little bits of information a little at a time to see how much they can handle, see if they're going to go run off and tell somebody else or if they, you know, keep it to the vest or, you know, if they're going to be talking about other their other friends to you, you know, that's a red flag. Uh, and even if you face challenges where you've had a disagreement or an argument, a little fallout or whatever, and you're able to repair it and come back together and, you know, um, repair that breach, then that strengthens the relationship. And that is the building block of friendship. But, you know, you once you land in another country, just because they're expats don't mean that they're your friends or that you have to make an alliance with them or you know that you even have to associate with them especially after you get a certain age i'm 57 years old and you know you when you get this age you have <laughs> you don't have the capacity to deal with a lot of nonsense you know so yeah that's my word for today that's what i wanted to share today because you don't hear a lot about how people are treated and what to expect, personalities, communities, how you're received or maybe how you're left out or if you're an introvert, how do you find friends or how do you um, build community? That's just how you do it. You just have to be intentional about your community building skills. You have to be intentional about connecting with people. You have to be intentional about who you want in your circle and whose circle you want to be in. It doesn't have to be this big click. It can be one or two. And that's enough. That's enough to build a relationship. And also, you can build relationships in other communities as well. Do you like to garden? Find your garden community. Do you like to sow? Do you like to uh, grow herbs? Do you like to garden? Do you like to uh, salsa dance? Do you like music? So then you're starting to create maybe other, you know, start creating communities with other groups because you have a lot in common. So, yeah introverts can thrive when you move abroad you just have to be intentional and you kind of have to know how to create community okay well that's it that was my experience that's what i wanted to share and if you want more information about how to move abroad you can come to my well not just come but you are invited I extend the invitation for you to come to my Patreon page, which is Regina Do It Lifestyle, where I have a lot of free information about moving abroad, some cooking tutorials, because I'm a chef first. I teach people how to live healthy lives through food because you need to be healthy while you're out there on the road. It doesn't mean that you want, you know, experience sickness or some health challenges, but minding your body, you know, is like the first defense to preserving health. 
So I offer cooking tutorials, cooking information, as well as travel tips, house sitting to get around the world for free, with free accommodations, and just tips like this on how to move about and have a great experience even when you experience challenges. Okay, once again, my Patreon is Regina Dillard Lifestyle. I would love to see you over there. You can join the chat rooms, get in where you fit in, and let's connect. All right, wonderful. All right, you all have a wonderful, glorious day. Did I mention I was in Orlando? Yeah, I'm in Orlando right now um, um, on a house sit. I'm waiting for my granddaughters to get here because they're part of a cheerleading competition. And then after that, I'll be traveling again and I'll let you know where I am next. But come on to the Patreon and I'll give you some um, information that I don't normally share on my YouTube channel. All right, talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, all.